What is up, SM gang? Welcome back to my mother in channel. Welcome to my channel news. Let me not throw What is up, SM gang? It's your girl, Shane Tro. The SF beginning at the end. Don't forget it. So let me say this for starters, I know that I have not uploaded in like six, seven months, seven, eight months. Um, I'm gonna tell y'all why real quick. One, mentally I've not been there. Second, I got in trouble for sneaking out. So I got my phone slipped for like five, six months. I've been working, so I'm on top of school. I'm, like I said, emotionally not there. So it's like, I don't want to put out content if it's not gonna be good content. But, you know, it's like, you gotta get shit done. If you wanna get shit done, you gotta put that effort in and get shit done. So I'm gonna get this shit done. Um, Y'all need to restrain my hair and it's really bothering me that this part is just lifted like that. But I don't wanna straighten it because I don't wanna put too much heat on it so i'm shaking again before i go back into work but yeah oh this part's supposed to be behind my ear i feel how I... hold on y'all give me a second I'm trying to get my silk press back together but yeah follow me on instagram if y'all hold on if y'all didn't because that's where i posted the first pictures when i first got it done on instagram i'm gonna insert the pictures right there but yeah so i was like i don't know what to upload either so it's like i recorded my brother's birthday party and i was in the middle of editing that but it's like it wasn't good so it's like if i know i didn't like it i'm not gonna put it out for y'all because i know to be honest like y'all not gonna like it so i'm not gonna do that to y'all but I was like, why don't I do a story time? And I was like, what am I going to do a story time? I was like, I can do a story time on my half when my dad passed away. So, I was just going to do that. But before I get into the story time, make sure you like, comment, share, and subscribe. Hit that notification bell to get every notification when I do upload. Because if you're not vibing with me, you're not riding with me. Period. So, also make sure you follow all my social media. They'll be in the link description below. And they're also right here at the bottom of the screen. And so yeah, y'all, this is really irritating me. But okay, we're gonna get into story time. So I had I was in eighth grade. I was living in Columbia with my dad at the time. Uh it was a school day and I was going to basketball practice. So before he had took me to practice, him and my older brother got into a little argument or whatever. And so, mind y'all, my dad does have high blood pressure, things like that. He doesn't need to be stressed and I like that at all. So, you know, in the way that I was trying to tell him, I was like, Dad, don't trip off of it. He's got to learn the hard way, this, that, and the third. He was like, you right, boo. So, he took me to practice or whatever. And it was that he's like, I'll come, I'll be here to pick up after practice. It's done. I was like, okay, cool. So, you know. You know, practice is going good. Practice comes to an end. And when practice is over, I'm looking and I don't see his car out there. So, mind you, I'm not thinking like something happened to him. I'm just thinking he got caught up at work or he's helping a friend with something or he got, he's busy. Because he was always a working man 24-7. So, I'm not thinking like my dad is in the hospital. Like, so... I'm just waiting and I'm the last person there and I'm waiting my coach my coach is like is someone on the way I'm just like I don't know like at this time I didn't have a phone so it's like I don't know so like I say like 20 minutes later my uncle had pulled up in my dad's car and I said like, oh there goes my dad and I get in it's my uncle I was like oh and I didn't ask about anything because I'm just like, okay, then my dad got caught up at work this night and the third. So, I, we're on the way home, whatever, it's just a silent ride, like nobody's talking or nothing. So, I get home, I shower, and I go to sleep. So, I wake up from my little nap, whatever, and I'm scrolling on TikTok and I go back to sleep. Because at this time I had the school iPad because I, I, we were doing virtual. 
so i'm back to sleep when i woke up and it's like everybody's in the kitchen you know just chilling nothing the vibe is good none of that so nobody still knew at the time my older brother junior walks in after work and he's like everybody who don't live here and get out and we like damn like me and my cousin we like what the, like what is his problem like, he's come home mad and gonna kick everybody out like what and so we all just sitting there quiet just look at looking at each other somebody's like what's wrong he ain't say nothing and so then somebody else was like, what's the, what's going on? He's like, my pops just died. And I'm not going to lie, he could have gave a, he could have delivered the news better than that. They just weren't out there like that. But it caught me by surprise. And it's like, when I heard it, I went to shock and I just hit the ground and just started crying. So I'm sitting there and I'm just crying, I'm just crying, I'm just crying. I'm not like, at this time, like hearing, like hearing somebody just died, it's like, it's sad, but it's like, I'm not believing this shit but it's still sad so it's like i'm crying and so i go into my room and i sit on my bed and i'm like, like i'm talking to myself I'm like no this can't be true this ain't true this ain't true i'm calling his phone from the house phone he's not picking up i'm just like okay maybe this something else just happened he's not gone like my dad is not gone he did not just leave me like that so i go outside and i sit on the porch because we had not the porch like we had this little bench in our front yard or whatever and so I sat there and I'm just crying. I'm just rocking back and forth. I'm just sitting there and I'm just thinking like, this is not true. I did not just lose my daddy at the age of 15. Like, this is not true. So my uncle's nephews came outside and one of them sat next to me. He's like holding me. He's like, it's okay. I'm going to be here for you. If you need anything, just let me know. I'll be here and just stay strong. And I'm like, okay. So they lean on the center right there. When I get back in the house, I get that phone. I come on, mom. I'm like, mom, dad is dad's gone. She's like, what do you mean? What? What? I said, mom, dad just died. She's like, what? I said, mom, dad's dead. Like he's not here. And so she's like, hold on, I'm finna call. I think she said she finna call his wife at the time. Uh, and so that happened over there. And I'm sitting there, I'm just crying. I'm just crying. I'm just crying. And my FC came in the room and she's just like sitting next to me. She's like, it's okay, cousin. It's okay. It's okay. And I'm just like, leave me alone. Leave me alone because it's like my dad wasn't really there for me emotionally and mentally how i wanted him to but at the same time it still hurts like because that's still a part of me like when i look in the mirror i see him like when people see me they see my dad in me like that's literally my twin so i'm just sitting there and i'm just like leave me alone leave me alone next thing i know my uncle and his girlfriend pull up and he was like, you want to go with us to the gas station? I'm like, yeah. And I got me a little Slurpee or whatever. And I'm, I didn't even drink it. Like, I was so fucking emotional. I didn't even drink it. So we get back to the house. I go back to the room. And my uncle comes in there. He's like, you want to come with me? Go get your sister's mom. And so I'm like, yeah, sure. So we pull up to her mom's house. And we go in there. I help her pack up her baby stuff. And we get in the car. And it's taking us longer to get back home than it took us to get there. So I'm just like, what? Like, where the fuck are we going? We end up at the hospital. They get out and they leave me in the car. Like, I'm just going to sit in the car. No. We get there. They get out and I get out. And I see his wife. I'm like, mom, I want to see him. I want to see him. She's like, you can't see him. Honey. You can't see him. I said, I want to see him. I'm not leaving until I see him. Like, that's just that. I'm not going nowhere until I see him. Let me see him. Let me see him. She's like, you can't. I said, let me see him. I want to see him. And so she, she told my dad's sister and was like, she's not going to want She's not going to stop until she sees him. She's like, just take her in there. Y'all, me seeing him like that was probably the worst thing I could have ever done to myself. But I'm kind of glad that I saw him like that because it kind of, I want to say it snapped me into re reality because I still wasn't believing at the time. But it's like when I walked in there and I seen him just laying there so lifeless, it like broke me so much. Like it really hurt me. So when I went in there, he was just laying there and his eyes were open, but he wasn't talking. He wasn't moving. None of that. He was just laying there like he was like paralyzed. And so I'm just laying there looking at him and I'm asking the doctors. I was like, did you, are you guys sure you tried everything? They're like, we tried everything. There's nothing we could have done. I was like, was there something that we could have done to help him expand his lifespan? They were like, no, there wasn't. 
So I just let them know. I was looking at him and I was like, well, can I kiss him on his head? And they were like, yeah, of course. So I kissed him and I just looked at him and I was just like, I was just so like, I was like, damn, like he's really, really gone. So after like five minutes of me being in there, they're like, yeah, to leave. And I'm like, I don't want to leave. Like, I'm not leaving my dad. Like, are y'all stupid? Y'all, I'm starting to, my eyes are starting to blur. But they were like, it's time. Like, you have to go. We have to take him. And I'm like, I'm not leaving him. I'm not leaving. I'm not going nowhere. So my aunt literally grabs me and walks me up. And as I'm leaving, like, his eyes start slowly closing and tears start falling. It is just like, I really felt like, at the time I felt like damn I literally just left my dad for dead like like I literally just left him there and it hit me harder when the tears started falling because it was like damn like he is really he's really going so after that uh I had got back in the car everybody was trying to hug me I was like just leave me alone I go back in the car we go back to my dad's house and my mom sent my grandma there to pick up my brother. Mind y'all, I had a basketball game that next day. And he was supposed to go to the game. My dad was supposed to come with me. So I was telling my mom and I was telling everybody that I'm not going until I play this game. And then once I play the game, I will leave. So I stayed. Um, the next day I went to the game. That night I didn't sleep at all, but I emailed my teachers and my coaches and I was like, my dad just passed so off. I'm, I'm not attending any more classes for a while. I will be at the game and that's that. They were like, okay, thank you for reaching out. Sorry for the loss of seven thirty. So that night I was just crying my eyes out. Like I still couldn't believe it, but it was like I was like I was in so much denial that I was that night I still was like, he's going to walk through that door. He's going to come back home. Like, I'm not believing that that was just my dad laying there. So, that whole night I was up and obviously he didn't walk through the door at all. So the next day I woke up and I was, cause I fell asleep for a little bit and I woke back up and I still started crying again. Like I went to his room and opened the door and the door was locked tried to open the door but the door was locked so it was like he's really gone so i just sat in my room and i cried i didn't eat they were like you got a game so you gotta eat and i was like i don't i'm not eating like i'm not hungry like y'all don't understand like i i was so fucking hurt and so everybody was like do you want a hug do you want a hug and i was like no i want my dad like y'all can't give me what i want so just leave me alone so before my game, I'm just sitting there at the kitchen table with everybody and his wife tries to give me a red book and I'm just like, I don't want this. Like, I like, come on now, like y'all are really, I get that they were trying to be there for me, but at the time I'm just like, y'all are barking my nerves. Like I'm finna swing on everybody, like just leave me alone. So the day of my game, uh, the nephew, my uncle's nephew is the same one who came outside to comfort me, came to my game and I was trying to get my head in the game as much as possible, but it's like it wasn't there. Like it wasn't there was no there was no getting my head into the game. I scored a few times and after a while it was like I broke down. Like I couldn't finish the game. I was like, Y'all gonna have to sub me in, like I can't do this. So I sat in the hallway and my coach was out that came out there, he was like, you know, you're very strong for that, like no one has ever lost a family member that close and then still want to continue to play. And I was like, you know, I did it for him, but it's like my head is just not there. So there's no point in finishing it. So I didn't finish. Mind you, I was only like two, three minutes left of the game anyway. So it was like, to me, it wasn't really no big deal. Um, I had got McDonald's. And then after I left the game, uh... I had got McDonald's. I barely ate that. Went home back to my dad's house, cried, and then uh, my mom called. His wife at the time was like, "She, she and Charlie said, come home," and I was like, "I don't want to leave." And I really didn't want to leave, but at the time, everybody thought I was staying for a guy that was there, but I wasn't staying for him. I was staying because I feel like if I 
came back to St. Louis, I was leaving my dad and everything else there. Like, I feel like I was just leaving him there. Mind y'all, every time my dad ended up in the hospital, like, I was always calling him, telling him, like, you're going to get through it. Fight through. You got this. Stay strong. And he always made it back. So when he didn't, it, this time, it was like the one time I don't call him and tell him that he's going to make it through. It was the time he didn't make it through. So, yeah, that was that. Um, but, yeah, back to what I was saying. Everyone thought I was staying there for some guy, and it wasn't even that. I was staying for him. I was staying for my dad. And people really didn't see see it like that, which was frustrating me even more. So I ended up staying at his ex-wife's mom's house with her and her kids for like a good week or two. Finally came back to St. Louis, started going to school, was still incredibly depressed. Um, I never really dealt with the grief of it. I kind of just found distractions to help me distract myself from him passing so it's kind of like I still I still think about it of course and I still wish I would have dealt with it then because I feel like now it's hitting me harder than it was before which sucks but I mean it's like like I gotta deal with it no matter what so it's like stop to me it's like I'm telling myself stop putting it on the sh hold on oh, I had to see my little symptoms in here but it's kind of like I have to tell myself to stop putting it on the back burner and start dealing with it. Because if I feel like if I really don't deal with it now, then it's going to hit me harder in the future. And I really don't want that. So I'm trying to deal with it now on top of school, on top of work, on top of paying my phone bill. Like, I think I have, like, the influence of him passing. It has made me stronger and it has influenced me to push myself to keep going and do bigger and better things. But at the same time, it's kind of weakened me in ways. Um, not having the, the actual love that I want from him causes me to look for it in other guys. So I feel like I constantly need that male love from somebody because I wasn't getting it from him. So it's like wherever I can get it, I'm going to get it. Which is something I need to work on because that's a bad thing. But it's kind of like, you know, it's kind of it's his fault, but it's kind of just like you, I can't fault him no more because he's not here. So it's like I'm just going to have to deal with it. But yeah, that was that. Um, we had his funeral, I think, three days. No. Nope. Um, we had his funeral, I think, a week or two after he had passed. Because I moved back down here. And then we went there for his funeral. And then we came back, yeah. So when I moved back down here, I think a day or two later, we had his funeral. I spoke at his funeral was extremely emotional um they didn't reopen his casket they left it closed uh due to the fact of us kid his kids not wanting to see it see him like that anymore but yeah came back down here got some counseling it helped but really didn't help tried therapy really didn't help medication didn't help but yeah, now I'm here, 16. Uh, this year will be the third year without him, November 11th. I got all A's in school. I passed all my finals. I got a job. I'm 16, paying my own phone bill, pay for my own phone. Don't play with me. But yeah, I am kind of just thugging it out at this point. But yeah, this will be the first upload of 2023 for me. I am... I promise y'all, I promise that I'm going to upload again before January end. So give me some time and I'm going to find something else to upload. And then, yeah. So, make sure you guys like, comment, share, subscribe, hit that notification bell. Like I said, 
to get notifications of when I upload because if you're not vibing with me, you can't ride with me in this one, period. Can't say no better. And yeah, we out this bitch at some games. Stay lit, stay tuned, stay humble. And that's on what? Period. <laughs>